Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Crystal Ball 2010, the show where we try and look forward 12 months and see what's in store after a stupendous 2009. It's been a wobbly start to 2010, there's no question about that, but it could be, could be a volatile year. The key question is trying to map where we exit it, even if the year is quite volatile. My guest today is a very elusive uh, head of equities at IIFL, Name Kumar, uh, formerly of CLSA, but uh, I meet him once in five years because he's extremely media shy and extremely reclusive. But IFL is having a conference on the 3rd to 5th in Mumbai, and because perhaps of that conference where they're showcasing some really big names from corporate India and some big speakers from across the world, that name has agreed to join me today to talk on the show. Name, good to see you. Uh, Thank you. Firstly, uh, how are you mapping 2010? I think uh, 2010 will be a year where there will be a lot of volatility. The call for 2009, to my mind, was much easier because we started off with a lot of pessimism. Globally, the price of risk was very, very high. And as we all know, the two key drivers for stock prices are changes in cost of capital and changes in earnings. And cost of capital has two components, interest rates as well as the risk premium. My sense at the beginning of 2009 was that the risk premiums were elevated and it was only a question of time before which it comes off, which would mean that riskier assets will re-rate and eventually uh, interest rates came off and risk premium came off and it was a much easier trade. In fact, it turned out to be much, much better than all of us anticipated. Now, as we stand today, in fact, at the beginning of January, if you had looked at any of the indices, junk bond premiums or VIX indices and all that kind of stuff, it was actually at an probably uh, a multi-year low. And it could have, anything could have sparked a rise. And what we have seen in the last two weeks is that after Chinese GDP growth number came, people got really worried that China is going to tighten rather quickly. Now, whether it happens, does not happen, we don't know. But that in itself has resulted in volatility rising. Markets have become too complacent, do you think, at the start of the year? I don't think there was complacency. In fact, uh, you know, when I was speaking, when I speak to fund managers, a lot of them were cautious. But because the market rallied the way it had, nobody had the courage to hold cash. They were playing along. They were playing along. Yeah. And uh, coincidentally, what happened also was that the commodity price expansion came through. And in the later part of 2009, I also noticed that a lot of portfolios enhanced their beta sure. and to that extent I think that there was some bit of complacency but you know people went uh, significantly overweight global cyclicals and commodities now I mean it's very very difficult to take a call as to what say aluminium prices or steel prices six months twelve months down the road would be and when you take these kind of, when you when stock prices have rallied say four times five times from the lows and even then you are over with those names. I mean, when things turn, they are pretty quick and fast and a bit nasty as well as we have seen in the last two weeks. So as I see 2010, I think that, you know, I view our market as, uh, I would break our market into two components. If I look at the Nifty EPS, this year is around 250 for FY10. Sure. And for FY12, the consensus estimates is about 376, 377. You see that coming through? Now, for that to happen, see, it's not an outlandish assumption per se, because last two years you have had zero growth and a lot of capacities are coming in. You name the industry, cement, refining, autos, power generation, across the board, and we have done a study where FY12 capacity is over FY08. 
the jump is at least 50 percent so the enabling environment for growth in earnings by 50 percent between FY10 and FY12 is in place because volumes will go revenues will grow exactly sure. now if as I mentioned to you I would like to break down this growth into two components one is those linked to the domestic cycle mm. one is those linked to the global growth cycle now almost 50 percent of this growth is actually linked to the global cyclicals to that extent there lies an unknown because we don't know how aluminium prices or refining margins will behave in the next 12 24 months and and to give you one example today a small change in refining margins say a three dollar swing can result in billions of dollars change in earnings of reliance Correct. so to that extent predictability of that component is I would say is not the visibility is not very clear but is that the only risk the commodities cluster I think that is a major risk sure. to my mind and therein lies the unknown and therefore every time some uncertainty arises linked to the global either China or elsewhere you will see that segment of the market get getting sold down and as we all know that has a large weightage in the nifty now if I look at the domestic cycle I am much more sanguine, much more bullish on the domestic cycle. I think the last five years was an era of investment cycle, particularly 2004 to 2008, where a lot of enabling factors were falling into place. Cost of capital was coming down, capacity utilization was going up, corporate cash flows were improving, corporates were getting much more confident. Mm. So they were willing to invest. So corporate capex rose very sharply between 2004 to 2008 and you played that theme, you would have made tons of money. The next five years, I think consumption will be the main theme. We have highlighted through our a number of reports uh, why we believe so. At the bottom end of the demographic pyramid, I think that income levels are rising uh, much faster than it has ever been in the past. So a lot of things like, say, cigarette volumes or toothpaste volumes or uh, auto volume, two-wheeler volumes, if historical trends have been, growth rates have been, say, 5% or 7%, it's now the time to challenge whether that growth rate can be twice as much. So if motorcycle volumes were twice as much as what it was, then what would be the earnings of companies linked to that particular sector? Have you?